if you've been in the cosplay community, you've probably come across the cosplay pervert. From unseemly touching, leering, and flirting, the cosplay pervert would play into the fantasy that is emphasized by the art form. Since cosplay is a celebration of fantasy by dressing up as a fictional character and embodying the essence of that character, the absence of the real that makes the culture so endearing is played into by the pervert looking to fulfill his own desires while absolving himself of any wrongdoing. While all deviant acts of sexual behavior against unwilling victims are problematic and just plain wrong, my goal is to examine these actions through the lens of the culture and get to the core of the mindset that drives these actions. I am not in the cosplay community, but I do have a window into the culture by virtue of being a part of the surrounding oasis. There is something inherently disturbing in the way the perceived value of cosplay is tied to eroticism, which justifies the problematic behavior of individuals sexually assaulting young men and women without any regard to the emotional, physical, and psychological effects that those actions may have. In conventional masquerade, where eroticism is the point, the purpose is of a sexual nature, usually between lovers for the purposes of consented pleasure. And that's the key word, consent. Regardless of the form of sexual act, be it of a non-consensual fantasy or not, it's usually between two consenting adults where no one is victimized in one way or the other. Cosplay, however, operates on a different set of standards, as it is about embodying a character in service of amplifying a part of oneself. No matter how revealing the costume, it exists beyond the sexual perception evoked in those unfamiliar with the character. Cosplay is an art form, and like any other art, the artist has no control over how it is perceived, as all art takes on a life of its own in the eyes of the viewer. But like other art forms, it's not the fault of the art how it is seen, but the fault of the culture surrounding it. It is not the responsibility of the cosplayer to not be assaulted or shamed for wearing a costume that happens to be revealing, just like it's not the responsibility of Rockstar Games to teach children never to steal cars, shoot police, or run over civilians. Art offers a perspective, and censoring art that happens to challenge your delicate sensibilities won't make you a good person, just an ignorant one. The ability to choose whether or not to do wrong has the benefit of creating a willingness to understand. What one can do is try to educate and hope that someone with problematic views of cosplay and sexuality will make the right choice. Cosplay, like every other aspect of geek culture, is a form of escapism. In a world where social, economical, and ecological issues keep compounding to the point of utter chaos, geek culture becomes a safe space where those of us who want to hold on to our sense of self can feel some semblance of control. Because each cosplay is an expression of character, that specificity breeds context in what that costume evokes. With that in mind, I do want to discuss one of the kinkiest costumes in anime, Junketsu and Senketsu from Kill la Kill. When it comes to the characters, there is a dichotomy of fashion and femininity which creates a juxtaposition of ideas that paint the concept of nudity not as a result of being vulnerable to the desires of the viewer but as a consequence of strength in service of their goals. Fashion is an expression of a specific time and place. While men can be fashionable, fashion in itself has always been feminine by nature, depicting the unattainable beauty of the modern woman to the wanting gaze of the modern man who will remain ever so insignificant to her desires. There's a strong focus in ensuring that each character is always dressed in the reddest clothes. The students and background characters are dressed in uniform, weighed down by the power structures in place that they are powerless to conquer. In the real world, where nudity and being naked equates to vulnerability, the most powerful strip down to nothing but a revealing kamui as a result of the powers granted to them by the attire. Rukia and Satsuki are the most powerful people in this world by virtue of being the only ones able to dare venture toward their goals because they're the only ones strong enough to even dream. The juxtaposition of a young woman stripping down to nothing while her vulnerability being what makes her most powerful is why that aspect of the show is not only welcomed but necessary because that is the point. 
while many cosplayers will choose to wear this because it's just a cool costume, there are those who will wear it because they love what the costume represents. Freedom. It's the freedom to strip away convention and live your truth that makes Siyi the hypocrisy of Satsuki fighting tyranny with tyranny a ballad of happiness. To you and I, a cosplayer stripped down to nothing but Junketsu is a joy to behold because like I said, it's a damn cool costume and I love what it stands for. To the cosplay pervert, it's a signal to take away the freedom that the cosplayer once found to be so endearing about the costume in the first place. If we can't be free in a fantasy of our own design, then do we even dare to dream? If I were to offer a guess as to why these actions are played for laughs and giggles, I'll have to say it may be the result of the media that normalizes the behavior of the pervert. But while it's possible that that could be the case, I really don't think it's probable. In anime, the antics of the pervert are usually met with a slap, a punch or a kick from the female, signaling just how wrong these actions truly are. These actions are usually played for laughs, as a result, I wouldn't put it past the cosplay pervert to get the wrong idea. Anime is a niche affair, and the actions of a pervert are not the consequence of the medium. As sexual harassment extends far beyond the realm of comics, anime and manga. Because an aspect of cosplay is the removal of the real in favor of the fantasy, the cosplay pervert will take advantage of the perceived setting, absolving himself of any wrongdoing because it's just a fictional character. Men may feel entitled to women's bodies due to societal cues and expectations, and this may be compounded with cosplay as women are no longer viewed as a person but as a character. Another issue is that of the waifu and husbando. For those who aren't familiar with these terms, they are used to signify a character in anime or video games that one is either attracted to or considers their significant other. A female character such as Urza Scarlet for example will be a waifu to one or more people. A male character such as Levi will be a husbando. And gender and sexualization doesn't determine how one person identifies with which character as a man can have a husbando just as a woman can have a waifu. This in and of itself isn't the issue as it's mostly an extension of how one identifies with their favorite characters but claiming a real person dressed as Urza as your waifu as a result of her costume is what tends to lead to problematic behavior. When such terms are used as justification for sexual assault, it's symptomatic of the inability to separate fantasy from reality. It's normal to feel something toward a cosplayer who is dressed as a character you genuinely feel a connection to. It comes with the culture, as we tend to identify with fictional characters more than real people. But it's important to never lose your grasp on reality because cosplayers are indeed our brothers and sisters who share the same connections with fictional characters as we do and such a connection should never be dismissed by the actions of one unable to see cosplayers as people to respect and rather as characters to be violated. I also understand being attracted to masquerade but masquerade doesn't explore character in the traditional sense and the point is always of a sexual nature. Cosplay is the identification of fantasy with the real self and is not consent even in its most derogatory form. It is expression, an art form where the self is the canvas. There is no reason to sexualize it unless sexuality is the point of the cosplay and even that doesn't equate consent on any level. The ignorant actions of convention goers give the art form a perceived level of danger that creates an unflattering image of the cosplay industry to those new to the culture. Signs and posters about cosplay is not consent are posted regularly at anime and comic conventions, but there is no process for how to deal with sexual harassment nor is there any focus from security to combat sexual assault or harassment towards cosplayers. As a community, we must do what we can for the sake of those who suffer. Yes, if you dress up in colorful, revealing outfits at conventions, people will look. And not all those looks will be innocent or even welcomed. But sexuality on the part of the art does not equate sexuality on the part of the artist. I really think this is a discussion that needed to be had. One can't just shy away from such topics and dismissing hard conversations because they make you feel uncomfortable is limiting. 
the world will not turn into a better place just because you wished upon a star. A lack of understanding leads to ignorance. More has to be done by those involved in the culture to protect the safety of cosplayers. But it's the responsibility of those within the culture to address their own views, biases and perceptions to reduce overall ignorance. Only through our own introspection can we create a safe space for geeks of all kinds. Thank you for watching this video. If you have cosplayer friends, share this video and carry on the conversation. Our YouTuber of the week is Hayley McKay. Please be sure to check out her work. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.